Welcome to Brunswick Now on ATMC TV. I'm your host, Megan Masser. Brunswick County is seeing rapid growth. In fact, according to the Economic Development Commission's website, Brunswick County is currently the second fastest growing county in the state. Along with that growth comes new businesses and a surprising number of them are owned or operated by women. We call them women entrepreneurs and that's what the focus of this month's show is all about. Today we'll welcome just a few of the many women entrepreneurs in our county. We will speak to Carol White, owner of Best Friend Biscuit Company in Southport, a dog treat company which donates some of its profits to no-kill animal shelters. We'll then speak with Heather Marrow, owner of Holden Beach Medical Center, and Ann Parvin, president of the Plantation Builders. Finally, we'll talk with Lindsay Hewitt, owner and operator of Lockwood Folly Marketplace. Join us for the next half hour as we bring you Brunswick Now. Welcome to Brunswick Now, ATMC TV, Channel 3, bringing you the best of Brunswick. Welcome to the show, Carol. Thanks, Megan. Thank you for having us in your home today. And you've put out a beautiful spread. And tell me a little bit about what this is. What is the company that you own? Okay, my company is Best Friend Biscuit Company. And mm -hmm. I make all natural dog treats. Mm -hmm. uh, really, the goal is, as you will see, everything that's in the treats is all human grade quality. Everything that um, I put in the ingredients is what we would eat. Okay. So, it's here, it's, it's wonderful, and uh, it's extremely healthy for the dogs. And it smells really good, too, so Thank I know you. that the dogs would, would love it. Now, today's show is all about women entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. and that's exactly what you are with Best Friend Biscuit Company. And so tell me a little bit about that. Is it challenging having starting a business in this area? You know, I, I've really received nothing but support. Mm -hmm. um, I started out with the Small Business Administration of Brunswick County helping me kind of get a business plan mm -hmm. together, that type of thing. But um, everyone really has supported the idea. I think it's a huge area of dog lovers. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether it's my particular type of business. I started out just doing farmer's markets okay. because I felt that was a good way. I, it's a very solitary business. I'm not a very solitary person. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm just baking all the time. So this way I was able to you know, see all the dogs, get mm -hmm. their reactions to my products, talk to the people, find out what they're interested in their dogs having. So I do the Southport, Shalote, and Wilmington markets. Would do more, but it's mm -hmm. I'm only one person. My husband helps me. Right. But I would like to do a few more this year. Um, but I, I think the biggest thing that's hard not to fight when you start is to be big fast. Right. You know, I, I just have that, you know, I want to do this, I want to do that, I want to mm -hmm. do this. And I've really tried to pace myself, and I, I think that's the biggest thing for people to know if they have an idea of a business they want to start, women, right. to start and just keep it paced mm -hmm. where, you know, okay, I've made this much, now I can move on to this. Okay. Now I can move on to this. And it's very hard to control, mm -hmm. but ultimately um, it, it's a good place to be mm -hmm. because I think I didn't have to jump off that financial cliff. Right you know, and still grow my business. So kind of like setting a little bit of, a, a little goals here and, and staying there. with it, because yeah. it's hard, because once you start to see it growing, you know, you really right. want to leap for it. Um, but I, I found that it's better to keep with my plan. And some things always come in. You know, mm -hmm. last year, Dog Living Magazine wanted to introduce my product in their wow. November 1st issue. Uh -huh. And I had no way for anyone to buy it if they're from Raleigh or Greensboro. So okay. the website that I wanted to establish this year in January mm -hmm. and February, I had to do last year, you know, in October uh -huh. in the midst of all holiday baking. But, and right. so you do have things you can't plan for 100%. Mm -hmm. But I would just say... You know, take your time and really think about it and, you know, don't feel that you have to just push and be big all at once. Right. You know, it's nice to kind of learn along the way and enjoy it. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell me a little bit about how you got started with your company and maybe when you got started? Yeah, it was a year and a half ago and on a total whim, I was kind of looking for something to do, a second mm -hmm. career kind of thing. And I'd always heard that you know, don't really seek out something specific. It will just come to you one day. Mm -hmm. And I always thought, you know, I'm sure. But one day I'm on the phone with my sister and she said she just received these treats, homemade treats from um, her husband's niece. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, and I said, what are they like? And so she was explaining them what they were like. And my husband came home from golf that day and I said, I'm doing the Southport Farmer's Market next week. Yeah. And he's like, what are you going to do? And I'm, dog treats. 
because I would have never guessed I would like that, but it was a culmination of my very favorite things. Mm -hmm. I absolutely adore dogs. I have my entire life. I love to bake. I love to cook. And in my career, my first career, I was in marketing and event planning. So the promotion of it, coming mm -hmm. up with the names, um, getting it out to the public, it was just the perfect thing for me. It sounds I like it. it. And where do you create the dog treats? Well, um, I make everything right now in my own kitchen. Okay. And I've upgraded to a convection oven because it just processes the biscuits more quickly. Mm -hmm. It dries them out faster. Um, I'm at the point now where I probably am going to have to move on to commercial ovens somewhere. Oh, wow. I would think probably by the fall of this year before all the holidays start. Okay. But as far as how I develop what they have, um, I had sent a survey out. I had over 100 responses, mm -hmm. and I basically asked what people wanted in treats, what kind of packaging mm -hmm. they liked. I had an entire list of ingredients of what they would like their dog to eat, what they absolutely wouldn't buy for their dog. Okay. So that kind of started the process. <laughs> um, but then my dogs, I have two, are not very discriminating on flavors, they'll eat anything. So I have actually a couple friends. Oddly enough, they all are Shelties, mm -hmm. four different Shelties that are very particular. And that's who I ultimately use as my taste testers. Oh, okay. Okay. So, but can, can humans actually taste the dog treats if yeah. they wanted to? Yeah, they're very good. Um, the cheese... Dixie's Disappearing Cheesy Chews are uh -huh. excellent, and Sam's Yam's Lakeside Snack with the sweet potato uh -huh. are very good. But like I said, everything is what we eat. Right. So, so it's perfectly It's safe. fine. And all of them, actually, it's in some ways better than we eat because mm -hmm. I don't use any wheat, corn, or soy. Those are the okay. most common allergens for dogs. Right. So um, the flours that I have in back of me are brown rice flour, mm -hmm. barley flour, oat flour, buckwheat flour, which that's gluten-free, okay. and then rye flour. So wow. it's, I know, sometimes I think <laughs> our dogs eat healthier than I do. But yeah, <laughs> and can anyone um, special order, maybe if their dog can't eat gluten products, could they call you and, and tell you that? And then you make one kind of special for them? Well, or? what I have to do is the recipes I have, I have a couple of customers that are diabetic. Mm -hmm. And so I do have treats that, you know, dogs with certain illnesses can eat. But I have to be licensed through the Department of Agriculture. Okay. So I can't just create something mm -hmm. and give it to anyone or sell it. I have to go through the whole process of sending it to a commercial laboratory. Okay. Then they analyze it for protein, fiber, mm -hmm. fat, and moisture. Once I get that back, I send it to the Department of Agriculture, and then they license it. And okay. I can't alter that recipe unless I send it back through the entire process. Okay. So, like, this year, I'm hoping to add three new flavors, mm -hmm. and I'll have to, this month, probably go through and have them sent to the laboratories. I'm hoping okay. to do a salmon mm -hmm. with spinach. Mm -hmm. um, one I'm going to call Bonnie's Three Bees, which is buckwheat, banana, and blueberry. Okay. And then the last one is a pumpkin because that's great for animal digestion. Oh, yeah. My, I give my dog a little spoon of pumpkin, actually. Yeah, and it'll have a little ginger in it, so okay. it's the, the tummy fixer mm -hmm, treat, mm -hmm. I hope. And what are the types that you have now, dog of treats? Of the dog treats? Mm -hmm. Well, I have Ruffles Drops of Love, which um, that's a gluten-free. It's brown rice flour and oat flour, and then it has carob powder, which... <laughs>